Hi guys, very welcome to Mentor, yet another video podcast. I hope you're all doing fantastic as always. So, I am sitting here in the airport waiting to board a flight going to London, so I thought as well I might as well use the time to, um, to um, do a bit of a podcast for you guys. Um, so, basically, what I want to cover in this podcast is a couple of questions that I've been getting regularly from quite a lot of you guys. Um, the first one I want to tackle is... Do you need to be a math genius in order to become a pilot? Okay. I get I get a lot of questions about how good you need to be at maths. Uh, a lot of people seem to be very worried about this and the answer to that is no. You don't need to be a math genius to become a pilot. Okay. Uh, in fact, if you are extremely intelligent and very, very talented in the uh, fields of natural science, you're probably better off doing something else because this job can be very repetitive at times. Um, and it's not that stimulating if you like to work with complex mathematics or with natural sciences as such. You're probably better off to become an engineer or work within those fields of science to first start with because aviation is not so much about that. However, do you need to be able to use the field of math within aviation? Yes, you do. Um, you will need to be able to understand the um, basic and the slightly higher courses of mathematics in order to make the most out of your flight training. Um, we work, for example, within the, uh, within the um, field of navigation, there's a lot of trigonometry. Um, there is you know, quite a bit of math and physics involved in understanding uh, the meteorology and a lot of the subjects that you'll be covering during your ATPL theory does have physics and maths in them. So you need to be able to understand it and comprehend mathematics but you don't need to be an absolute whiz within mathematics and physics in order to to be a good pilot uh, i certainly am not uh, i did good when it come, came to these um, uh, fields when i did my school schooling uh, but that's because i was working really really hard at achieving it i wasn't a whiz i wasn't someone who it came to naturally uh, i had to really work and you are going to have to work really hard on it as well because you need to absorb those um, subjects in order to understand the ATPL theory. Okay, So I hope that answers a few of your questions when it comes to that. When it comes to what kind of degrees you need to have, I've done a podcast on that already and to be honest it varies between different airlines. There are quite a few airlines out there who require you to have uh, a certain number of A-levels if you're from the UK or college degrees if you're coming from the US and also university diplomas in some cases and the only way to know that really is to go into the websites of these airlines or talk to the flight schools like CTC for example they will be able to tell you what kind of background schooling you need to have in order to do your training and be able to apply for those particular airlines okay uh, so that's about maths and physics the other question that I'm getting continuously all over all over and over and over again is whether or not you can have glasses or any kind of, uh, of eyesight determined um, and still become a pilot and the answer to that is yes I have glasses myself my one of my eyes is slightly weaker than the other um, the limits there are limits to how much um, problems with your eyes you can have and the best um, suggestion I can give you there is to go into and talk to your aeromedical examiner Ask them, tell them about what kind of glasses you're using, uh, how many dioptries you have and so on. And they'll be able to tell you whether or not you can get your class 1 medical. But I can say right now that you, most people with most uh, normal glasses and things like that will be able to do your training. Providing that you have your glasses and a spare pair of glasses with you. That's what I have. I have a, my normal glasses and a spare pair of glasses in my flight bag. Um, when it comes to eye surgery, it's a different thing. So eye surgery up until very recently has been completely banned. We were not allowed to do eye surgery and then get your class one medical. However, that's being lifted because the eye surgery has proven over time to be good and working. But I would be a little bit cautious when it comes to this. Make sure that before you do any kind of eye surgery, you go and you speak to your doctor and your aeromedical examiner to make sure that you don't um, do something that will stop you from, from getting your class one medical. So it is changing, it's constantly evolving because the procedures are getting better and better. But there are still a couple of question marks when it comes to, um, to eye surgery. So do speak to your doctor. And 
this goes for everything. When it comes to medical issues, I am not an expert. I want you to talk to your aeromedical examiners before you make any decisions. And as always, what I'm getting, what I'm doing on this podcast, with you guys, is for you. It's 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 really entertainment. I don't want you to base your life's decisions on what I'm saying. Okay, I'm just hoping that I'm helping a few of you. Um, so that's it. I'm gonna be gone for a couple of days now, working, and I'm hoping to continue my um, series about failure management this weekend. So for now, I hope you're all having a fantastic day. If you like this video, then please press the like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll be continuing to produce these pod podcasts as long as my employer is happy with me doing so and you guys like it. So for now, have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time.